Oh, Foot Clan, it is almost time. The NFL season right around the corner. we got a great show for you today. We're talking about some waiver wire gems, getting into the news, answering your questions, and a reminder, two more draft times remain for the Megalobowl. Head over to megalobowl.com and get in there. Make sure you like and subscribe and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Two more sleeps. Okay, Grandpa. What? I like it. Yeah, we got football this week. Mike's not going to talk on the show today. That way his uh, football time can be maximized. Yeah. Volume, well, tone. This is the first time ever. I This is just realizing in my brain right now because we were talking about the schedule. Yes, yes. There will be two It's Football Times <gasps> this week for the first time ever. Wow. Because, <laughs> That's because we're walking there. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> because there's a game on Friday. Yeah. For I, the, the NFL's trying something out, <laughs> I guess. Well, they always do, like, you know, sometimes the first week, Monday, they do a double I am laughing at the idea that they're trying something because, yes, they're having a Friday game in <laughs> yeah. Brazil. Well, I they, wonder how it's going to work. That's all I'm saying. Is oh. they, I bet you they know A plus B equals money. Yeah. Well, they, they do weird stuff like start two games on Monday at the same That's time. That's true. We like, have criticized that. They try things out, and generally speaking, like Monday night does not get its own. It's football time, but I don't know, man, for a Friday standalone game. You, you, you just said there's going to be two this yeah, week. It's so, yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's done. happening. Tuesday, September 3rd, two days away from meaningful, actual, real NFL football that's going to count for your fantasy roster, and we're here to help – you through the entire season. It's amazing. So we our our week one rankings are live, um, and I was working on them more this morning. And just before the show, I'm I'm literally looking at the order of these players and who I would start and all of this. And it it dawns on me. I go, the answers are days away. Like we get to know who is the better player this week. Like right. it's not yeah. all you know. Yeah, you yep. spend these months of just all this hypothetical, all this analysis, all this. Talky talk talk nonsense, and now it's like the points are are coming. They're here days away. I'm so I'm I'm is just there, jacked. I mean, this is not a uh, part of our normal plans today. But is there a singular player? And I'll give you a second to think about this. That you are the most excited to see play football in week one. I. I know mine. We'll put Malik Neighbors out there. Okay. I, I, the rookies are always in that category, mm -hmm, yeah. and then compounded with just the my guy and the anticipation for him on the field. Is he the next Jamar Chase, Mike? Yeah, it's Caleb. Yeah, I, I, and and I have team captain I, Caleb Williams. I currently have you know very little personally fantasy invested in the Chicago Bears, other than you know making my projections and everything. It's just. It hasn't worked out for me. Although I did, we were in a uh, our league of shadows. I did just double up my QB. I took Caleb with my second to last pick. Nice, just in case. Yeah, like just in case. Uh, but watching him, like the preseason is was very impressive for Caleb, making in like really difficult throws. What's going to happen though when it's an actual NFL defense and not a preseason defense? Will that will he still be able to do it? I would say the the first player that just naturally came to mind that I'm very like I think everyone in the world needs it to work. Let's say it together. Colby C Parkinson. CJ oh. Stroud. <laughs> uh you you can't you dude, you can't fail. You I mean you can, but please do not because there is so much writing yes. on you leveling up and being <laughs> that dude. The whole team, you know, front to back, like the Texans are supposed to be an awesome offense. Nico goes high. Diggs is, you know, you got to build that foundation I mean, on rock, Jason. Right, can't it's be like, sand. You, you, I mean, 
it's just got to work. Please, C.J. Stroud. <laughs> Are you please, at, you're CJ petitioning Stroud, him to do what he does. Be great. Be the player that everyone thinks you're going to be because we were here. We were here with Baker going into year two when he was – Oh, don't say that. He was the dude. He was, you know – Oh, man. He, that, what did he get? O Odell Beckham um, added to the roster. Yeah, Landry he was, was be, on that roster. He was going to be the next greatest quarterback. Was that, was still like, Fred, was that Freddie Kitchens that year? Yes. Kyle, do you, yeah, that was yeah. I, I believe so. Too yeah. many kitchens in the kitchen. <laughs> yes. Um, we have uh, a lot going on. We got news to talk about. We got a waiver wire segment where we're talking about the undrafted gems that you can pick up. I just took one of them. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if it's it in was, this list, but I took one of these guys with the last pick of our draft, uh, our it's League of Shadows great draft. Great pick. So we'll talk about some names, some players that you may want to hot swap off of the back of your bench and, and maybe put somebody else in there that has some upside and then we'll jump into the mailbag we got voicemails uh you guys have sent in we got tons of questions coming in to the show as we get ready for the season to kick off i can feel the energy in the room it, it is it is palpable mm -hmm. we are ready for football um we are ready to see these teams and 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 see our fantasy team succeed but I just wanted to say in general, thank you for this past off season. It's been awesome. Thank you for those that came out to the live show. For those of you that have joined the Foot Clan over the last month, that have become a part of our community. This show is going into the 10th season of doing this. And um, I know I can speak for all three of us to say that no, we, you have, can't. we have the same excitement, energy, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and okay. joy. All right. um, also, I can't stop buying more and more things. Nice. To help support the draft. The draft. Yeah, because good for you. I am the champion. Good for you. And there is a rule in fantasy football that you should be delusionally rude to your league mates when you're the champ. So I have got. <laughs> Being the champ is. It is so good. It's so good. It's the highest high, my friend. It is. And it's also. It's it's expensive. <laughs> oh, and it, you know what? That's it. It's like that's right. FantasyChamps.com. You know what keeps happening is I think of one thing I want to bring to the draft, and then I put it in my Amazon cart, and then I realize I need that twenty five dollar you know limit to get. Oh, the, like, you got to get the shipping. Uh, yeah, 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 you do. So I'm like, oh, what other thing can I buy? And then I just keep buying them. But um, yeah, I got some stuff in store. Oh, very exciting. It's gonna be very fun. But uh, no, the point there was not that I'm the champ. Although that's always the point. It's that uh, we're very thankful to have you along for the ride. We do have two Megalobowl draft times remaining. The 5 p.m. tonight draft mm -hmm. uh, for the Megalobowl, which is the largest fantasy football league. It's the one with all the Foot Clan members. Um, it's going to be super fun this year. And I, I actually was talking to a ton of Foot Clan people this weekend, and one of the comments was like, I always love playing in the Megalobowl, but when you guys pulled trading out, I quit. Yeah. And I said, trading's back, baby. Yeah, trading is back. The playoffs are a little bit easier to make. I expanded. I, I, we, we really mirrored uh, the Megalo Bowl to our League of Record format. So the scoring, everything is how we like to play. So And the people that are in these leagues are awesome. They are our people. They are you. You, you listening are who's playing in it. I have not done my draft yet. So if you want to try to guess which draft slot I'm in, <laughs> we've got one left tomorrow. And you can still, nine, you can still 9 join. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. September 4th. So. Yep. There is time. Megalobowl.com. Sorry, Jay. Uh, what are the prizes? We've and that's got... Pacific time. Yeah. Uh, the prizes? The prizes are... It's very specific. The, prize, the prizes Swish. are the winner of the Megalobowl plays automatically. They are in our listener league in 2025, and you become an ultimate Foot Clan member for life, forever. So that is awesome. Jason also mentioned at the top, the week one rankings are up on the site. The start sit tool, all of the in season things are happening right now at the fantasy footballers.com and um, tons of free resources for you. Amazing articles from a really talented writing staff coming out every single day. And um, it's, it's go time. I mean, just if you're like me, just soak it up all day, every day, no matter where you're at. And your family will totally support that. Um, you can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Let's jump in. I think this is the button. Here it is. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. I got to graduate my button pushing to in-season mode. That was still off-season. So. Yeah, it takes some time. Hurry up. 
All right, we're looking at um, week one stashes, some players, some undrafted gyms, uh, the what-if players, right? Like if something goes exceptionally well in week one or the hierarchy maybe at the wide receiver room or running back room changes and we're, you know, things that we're not expecting. What are some of these names in your mind for week one? Yeah, it's it's really common for me to finish a draft and then – look at the waiver wire afterwards and go, I would rather have this guy yeah, than that yeah. guy. That, you got a little more time. That's, that's normal. Yeah. Um one of the first names I'll bring up is the one you drafted last um in our in our league we just did, Andy. It's Samaj P. Ryan. Um He's it, gonna be very interesting. He is he is extremely valuable. This is a role I mean you you know I'm all about Isaiah Pacheco and it seems it, part part of the news uh, this week is that Clyde Edwards Alaire was put on the, uh, what is it, the NF NFI. Yeah, the NFI, and so he's going to miss the first month of football, if not more. Right. So now we know why they went and got Pirine, so I'm not as scared about Pirine for Pacheco. However, this is this is an important offense. We, we saw Jarek McKinnon have value. This is a player who caught 50 balls last year for a bad offense, and now he goes over to the Chiefs. So he's just sitting there on the waiver wire as the backup to Pacheco, who will be involved. He's going to be active this Thursday already. So P. Ryan is, I, I think, a must, you know, hot swap type of player. Yeah, I'm, I'm just genuinely curious how the team uses him and how fast he gets integrated into the offense. Uh, everything you said is right. It, you, you had – the one thing about P. Ryan that's interesting to me is that you have respected coaches that seem to want him and trust him, where Zach Taylor, to our own demise, continued to trust him in Cincinnati. He was picked up by Peyton last year. Obviously, they went out and they they found McLaughlin. That was an unexpected uh, player in the running back room, and then they drafted Estime, so there was kind of no room for him. But then Andy Reid picks him up, uh, you know, where if there's anybody that can utilize less talented players for greater fantasy output, we often talked about Damian Williams and whether he was a legitimately good running back or not. Mm -hmm. He was almost a Super Bowl MVP on that team. So um, a fun player to watch for sure. I mean, last year, this is the show where you could have brought up names like Puka Nakua and Kyron Williams, Sam Laporta, who was only 54% rostered after drafts last year. So I think that's a good one. I'd also bring up another running back in Marshawn Lloyd. Yes, that was the next most important name to me. Um, running back for the Green Bay Packers, rookie running back. We talk about it every year. Somehow, some way, at least two rookie running backs seem to break into the top 24, and we're sitting here going, you know, a couple weeks ago, well, how's that even going to happen this year? Then all of a sudden, Marshawn Lloyd's not put on the IR. A.J. He's, Dillon is. and he, He's also back at practice, which yeah. uh, the, the timeline for his injury – you know, when he was going on IR, it seemed like he was not going to be ready for the season. I'm not positive he will be. He might not be. Even if he is not active week one, you should still pick up Marshawn Lloyd. He's an explosive running back in a committee with no A.J. Dillon um, in front of him for a good offense. So he and, must be rostered. And it, Jacobs has missed a little bit of time here and there, and it's the what if, right? Like, is that the kind of offense where suddenly Marshawn Lloyd, if he was by himself too, he, he would be an interesting player to add to the roster. The only problem there is, I don't think Lloyd plays in the first couple of weeks. So if you that would be a longer stash and you might want some quicker return, Mike. Do you have some names? Uh I mean the quarterbacks to pay attention to, like Will Levis, uh from Tennessee. He could turn into a, a late round guy who's really giving you points. And I get it Caleb Williams was probably drafted in your league, but now that casual leagues are going, I don't, I'm seeing him drop lower and lower where he was ADP a top he was like QB 11, which that's right on the fringe of may or may not get drafted, but I think that he is a uh, a really good pickup and C with your other quarterback one. And then at the running back position, I'll say it again, Taysom Hill for the Did New Did you Orleans. say at the running back position? Or at the tight end. I mean, because it's, it's, it should be. Yeah, it's it whatever, is man. It's He's everything. Taysom Hill is tight end eligible for a lot of platforms, and we don't know what the Saints I'm are going to do. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Mike. I'm, yeah. I'm with you on this. I hate it. I have th I have this feeling right <laughs> yeah. now that we're going to come out and see so much Taysom Hill at running back in this yeah, game. I think so. And they they play against Carolina in the opening week. They're favored. They're at home. If you're talking about, I thought you were going to say it's their favorite. No. Like it's their favorite team to play. <laughs> it's everyone's favorite team to play against. Um. So yeah, I mean, you you talk about 
Like, I was looking at the rankings. I was like, oh, that's great for Alvin Kamara. I was like, they're going to be up. Maybe it's more of a grind game. Maybe it's more of like a Jamal Williams. And I'm like, no. oh, it's Taysom. It's Taysom. It's Taysom week one. And the other tight end, uh, I just, in our family league. Completely agree. I had grabbed. It was really late, and it was everyone had their starting tight end. So I took Hawkinson as I'm going to stash him, and then I was going to find someone else to play. Unfortunately, someone took Taysom Hill before I was able to go, and I had to scramble. And, well, what am I going to do? Greg D. Greg Dulcich of the Denver Broncos is, and well, he's an electric athlete. We love seeing that. And who is who's established for the Denver Broncos passing attack right now? Cortland Sutton. That's it. I mean, like the running backs are going to get their targets, but no one else on this team is going to go out. And that you would project, oh, this is a 20% target type of player. He had a great target share as a rookie, just has been hurt. But So he is a a very late tight end that I think you should – even like if you have that one spot, I think stashing Greg Dulcich isn't the worst idea. Other players that I think might surprise you in week one, um, I think Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch in Arizona, opposite of Marvin Harrison, might be a surprise in week one against Buffalo – Diami Brown's going to get an opportunity in Washington. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, what's his role going to be as a wide receiver in Dallas in week one uh, as he's had a good camp? And so those are some other names worth bringing up. And, yeah, oh, I'm so excited. I, yeah, I, yeah. I would throw out a couple of rookies as well, Adonai Mitchell and, um, you know, I, and Malik Washington. Those are guys that I think they're kind of third on their depth chart. But they've got an opportunity. It's it's the surprising, you know. When I when I look back at like the breakouts every week one, a lot of times it's the rookies. I mean, last year's Puka, right? It was like you just didn't know. You didn't know he was going to be involved. That involved. Malik Washington is an excellent stash right now. I like I I liked the player, and yeah, reports are now positive for Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. But they're both coming off an injury. Like, yeah, if, it's, if it's like, of, oh, they're both finally back to practice. Yeah, if Waddle goes out there and it re it was a really bad calf injury that we we didn't know about and he tweaks it in week one, Malik Washington is going to be very heavily sought after on that Tuesday waiver wire. All right, thanks again to NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers a reminder local and national games on youtube tv nfl sunday ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital only games device and content restrictions apply news and notes from around the league presented by usaa insurance all right mike i'm going to give you the power of telling me whether i hit this button or not but jamar chase he was present at practice on Monday. He did not participate. And Zach Taylor, who has learned a thing or two, <laughs> he, he came out and said uh, on whether Chase will play on Sunday against New England. Are you asking about will just firing the full panic alarm? Yes. I are you? Do you want? I'm not at no. I'm I'm not at sound the sirens, but I am at the point of. Let me get the quote in there. He said, yes. "We'll just take it day by day." Go ahead. I, if you haven't drafted yet, I can totally understand letting him – like the other big wide receivers that we've been talking about who – like like A.J. Brown. Yeah, he's the name. Would you take A.J. Brown I over would, Jamar now? If it was today, I would. Yeah, if I'm if I'm drafting now, I think both are great players. Like right. I, I, I love both players. So um, taking one that I'm not sure plays this week over one What are you one cackling I, about over there? I am I am chuckling to myself because I think I know you're not I, I you're giving oh, your advice. You think. I just know that Jason is in a in a unique position on Thursday in our League of Record draft. You think I'm being selfish over for, here? For if for it would be beneficial to him if Jamar Chase fell a couple of spots. <laughs> I don't in think the draft. I don't think he's going to make it to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, but, too, I'm too far for but that. But point to being, I like I honestly my my true belief is Jamar Chase. Week one suits up and plays football. I guess that's the, the that's the question. I think he does. I think he's. Two I think years, he doesn't. I think he does. He has two years left. Um, there's also still look. We're at we're at the eleventh hour. There is a chance that a contract comes through. We were getting some rumors that they were close. I don't. I don't know what in the world is going on there. Like CD Lamb. There, there it is. There it is, Cincinnati. You go. Hey, look. 
Uh, Mr. Jamar Chase, here's what CD got. Would you like that as well? Because, we're look, we're not going to give you Jefferson number, but, but we'll give you CD's number. Let's get that done. Sometimes it's it does hard. seem that simple. And then uh, this morning we got news that Trent Williams will be back for the 49ers. That is, that is gigantic. That is literally yeah, he's huge. The gigantic <laughs> news. He was uh, it was not looking good for him to start the season playing for the 49ers. And that dude will hold out. Yeah. <laughs> he's already proven a That's, year, right? Yeah, I'm saying if you if you don't give Trent Williams his money, he is not showing up to work. He has set a precedent. <laughs> But the 49ers got their deals done to the point that Mike was making. They got them done. Ayuk yeah. and Trent Williams back on the roster. That's great news for McCaffrey, who returned to practice today. So McCaffrey is on um, on schedule. And, again, he plays on Monday Night Football against the Jets. Oh, my gosh. Monday Night Football 49ers Jets? Yeah. What could I go want wrong? that game. <laughs> <laughs> I want that game. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. All right. Mark Andrews. Not on the injury report, so that's great. Hollywood Brown ruled out, but they do they are talking like Hollywood's back in week two. We'll see. I would be surprised. I don't know where the optimism is coming from. I mean, obviously, they, they, they know, but this injury in the timeline, to me, it made sense. Obviously, they didn't put him on the IR, so you expect that he's not going to miss four weeks. But I don't know, man. I, 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 I am less optimistic just based on the actual injury and the normal timeline for that that he plays in week two. Uh, I think... Yeah, I thought that it came from Andy Reid, but I can't find the quote right now, so we'll see. Um, not that you would – like, do you put Hollywood Brown on these – like, if you're not drafting him, I'm, I'm, I feel like he should be on a roster. I really do. You think he should be on a roster? Yeah, I mean, people are sitting here throwing if you've got all an, season long just uh, Sky Moore and Justin Watson. These guys are landing on rosters. Like, Hollywood is much better than them. If you have an IR spot, that's fine. If you don't have an IR spot, I'm not personally wasting a bench spot on a guy that can't – like, like let's say he was active next week in, in week two, since we know he's not going to play this week. Would you start him week two, first game back from this injury? No, no, no you you're wouldn't. not drafting him as a player that you're going to start. Like it, I, I agree. I, I would put him on the back of the bench. I think that is a, a wise decision. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, yeah, we he's... mentioned that he's placed on the NFI list. He's going to miss at least four weeks. Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, man. Oh, my goodness. I guess yeah. we went through all this all weekend long, but Ricky Pearsall was uh, shot in an altercation in San Francisco. In the chest. Yeah, through the right side of his chest. He is. He has already been released from the hospital, which is outstanding news that he was that fortunate from the incident. He has been placed on the NFI list, so he will not be playing at a minimum four weeks. Yeah, I think it'll be longer. Yeah, the bullet went through clean, no organs, which is great. Yeah, and it came out the back, which is just a, wild, just wonderful. I mean, if you're getting shot, yeah, it's yeah, awful. It's, but it's best case scenario, <laughs> best case for, scenario, for terrible. I mean, he was an inch away from death. That's yeah. just wow, just insane. Yeah, that news was absolutely wild. Jalen Warren, practice, expected to play in week one. Dallas Goddard, also expected to get back and practice. Uh, he actually resumed on Sunday, so um, Goddard should be back out there. That was today's news and notes presented, as always, by USAA Insurance. You can learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will take a quick break and come back with your questions. I bet we will. No, still... Still off-season mode. All right, uh, let's jump in. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, it's week one. All right, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button. You can find it in the menu. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Lots of questions coming in, Jason. Mm -hmm. And all we've got to do is get them all perfectly right. That's all we do. All right, let's jump in. Uh, we'll go to a voicemail. Hey, Ballers. This is TJ from Pittsburgh. My question is, when you're drafting in multiple leagues, do you try to diversify your teams, or do you want to keep them as similar as possible? Thanks. Oof. Uh, it's it's a mix for, so the, for me personally. The question is, when you're in multiple drafts, are you trying to target the same players or do you want to diversify just in case the players that you're targeting, they are the bust picks of the year, so you want to 
balance things out, or do you want to put all the eggs in one basket? I, I you I'm know, not a coward, man. <laughs> well, I mean, it, when you say you're drafting in a lot of leagues, obviously it's very different if you are, you know, if you're filling out 150 entries into um, the Best Ball Mania that you want to diversify. That's yeah. just smart strategy um, to to make sure your portfolio isn't just completely going to get wrecked, but. Otherwise, this isn't really a strategy thing. This is a personality. It's what do you enjoy? And for me, basically, I've got two league types. The the like three leagues that really, really matter, and I'm just going to try to draft the best players, which I end up getting the same guys because it's who I believe in this year. I'm going to win everywhere or lose everywhere. And then there's the like like our family league where we're playing with our boys. I, I, don't, I really don't care about like being awesome in there, so I grab the players that is fun that I want to have that I don't have anywhere else. Yeah, strategically speaking, uh, if you have conviction about players, that's what the off is all about. Like you, I don't approach it with cold feet about, oh man, this is going to be the third league I have Cooper Cup in or Calvin Ridley in. I'm always thankful to get those guys at the spots that I'm getting them at, and um, you know your your roster is never mirrored top to bottom. Like if you've got the same players, maybe you have two or three or four of the same players, so. I would not go away from them for, you know, the, if you were drafting number two in five drafts, maybe I'd split Tyreek and CD up a little bit, like sure. stuff like that. But later on in the draft, I'm not doing that. Yeah, and the on Sunday when you don't know if cheering for a player, like if a player scores, like, is this good mm -hmm. or is this bad? I don't know I, because I'm I have everyone and I'm playing against everyone. You can avoid that. YouTube uh, question from Joseph writes in: Do you think Christian Kirk's involvement in Jacksonville is concerning, coming over from a or coming from a scared Christian Kirk manager? He has not been on in two wide sets. Uh, that's the same thing that happened last year. Um, no, I'm not it, worried. I'm I'm not worried about Christian Kirk. He does. He has kind of turned into one of those invisible players. I believe he was dealing with uh, an injury over. The, uh, over these last couple months as well. What it comes down to for Christian Kirk is I believe in the talent of Christian Kirk. I think that the Jaguars do as well. So he's a you can't keep him off the field. Like I, I, You gave Gabe Davis the money. I understand. Christian Kirk is, is actually good and will help your team win football games. Yeah, I mean, he, he was last year played with Calvin Ridley. And in the healthy games, he got, he got injured in week uh, 13. Up to that point, he was the wide receiver 23. His 17-game pace was 130 targets for 1,100 I think, yards. I mean, he's going to be super involved in this offense. Yeah, I think the thing with Kirk is like like what you said. This is a, to me, a low-end two type of player with some upside on a week-to-week -week basis, but he's not a dominator, right? Like, he his career high in receptions in a year is 84. That's nice. But this is – we know what Christian Kirk is six years into the league, and – Sometimes he can feel blasé to select because yes. cause you can be taking, you know, he's going to go in every draft ahead of where Brian Thomas is going. I enjoy drafting Brian Thomas way more. It, well, it's yeah, just you're, the you're, truth. You're getting 10 fantasy points in a half PPR. Like, just book it. You, you got Christian Kirk in there, he's 10 fantasy points. And yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's good in some scenarios. But, uh, yeah, his ceiling is definitely a little bit more capped. But th this team does not have enough options to eliminate Christian Clark Christian Kirk outside of injury. So Ingram and Kirk are going to soak up so many targets. I think the it the rise of Brian Thomas, like the the noise of the rise of Thomas. <laughs> the noise of his second half of training camp is helping to squeeze out your excitement for Christian Kirk. What is your biggest fantasy football fear heading into the 2024 season? That's the next question that we have. Um what is the biggest fear? Jason might have accidentally mentioned his. Yeah, I, I which think was I did. Stroud I mean, failing. It, yeah, it goes to Tank Dell as well. You know, I'm I'm very bullish on his unstoppability, and so if he gets injured or is gets Jahan Dotson for some reason, uh, that will be devastating. I think that. I think that it's the the CMC 101 working out the way it's supposed to. Hmm. Um, he's been there, and it's hard to repeat. We take it for granted with CMC. Everything should be fine. I think the 49ers in general are a question to me of, like, 
Does everything just come together perfectly? The, the signings this week are going to help tremendously, but at the same time, like... The vibes have been bad there for a while, and now everything's coming together right at the right time. It does feel like it's working out. And then Philly, like, a lot is dependent on Jalen Hurts, just like C.J. Stroud. If Hurts cannot step up his game in this offense, which is a... He's going to have to make more decisions in this offense. There's a lot more option routes. There's a lot more movement. This is not as straightforward as what he was used to, and he's going to have to handle protections. He's going to have to handle things, um, and you're depending on him for A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, so that's an interesting one too. Mine is selfish, and but it is also related to the group of the elite wide receivers who didn't practice – who have not done training yeah. camp, are they still elite wide receivers to start the year? How now, are their hammies? Brandon, Brandon Ayuk, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, I, and look, I'll just toss Justin Jefferson in there. Not that he's not practicing, but he's an elite wide receiver who we have some concerns about. That's four guys who are very early picks that and three of them have not really practiced. They, they for, for the most part, have skipped training camp. All right, let's turn to another voicemail question. Hey, ballers. For keeper leagues, do you prefer keeping players at their previous year's draft value or making everyone use their first and second round picks as their keeper picks? Thanks. <laughs> so, keeper question, do you get to keep a player for last round's draft cost or no matter what, it's your first or second round pick? We have, we have hotly debated this a thousand times over the years. Um, maybe not hotly, but just different opinions of what we think. I think there's only one hot part because both of these formats are great. I don't, I don't really have a preference between either. Our league of record I is you basically were no, no, pretty what, against last round. So what I am very against is waiver wire pickups yeah. being used as a last round pick. Like that is the I part. Agree. So if you're in the format where you keep a guy at the value of last year's cost, gotcha. I can't stand when you get to get a waiver wire pickup that wasn't drafted. You know, yeah, but then what? What's last year's cost for a waiver wire pickup? No, you shouldn't be able to keep them. You didn't draft them. They weren't drafted. They're not a keepable asset. I, I hate that. Or, <laughs> or you made the keep them at ADP. So, so you you're the guy that had the foresight to go get Kyron or Puka or or I guess I should say Puka. You're right. I Laporta, did. I drafted Puka or, or last, year. last year. But you don't get to keep them because you're in a keeper league, and you're the one that that you you pick them up off the waiver wire and you don't get to keep them. You, I, you can that's keep part them, of being a great but manager. not for a last round draft pick. I am fine. For waiver Two wire rounds buying ADP because you did something great. How about that? That's yes. fine. I'm okay. totally fine, right. fine with All that. Right. Yeah. Either, well, let's uh, put that in pen <laughs> that's to paper. The, that's the hotly debated part of Either this Either ADP value for the waiver or if you want to give one to two round bonus because you picked them up and kept them. But Is that what you just said, Falcon? You, yeah. Do you, do you play in a league with two rounds behind ADP? No, but that would – that would, would Yeah, the yeah so – It yeah. makes sense. The I don't – personally, though, the, the first or second round – I don't love that, look, because there's going to be teams out there that, like, they just they don't have a player that's worth being kept for a first or a second round pick, and now you're you're already behind the eight ball against these strong teams. So that's I have my concerns there, and it's I, I like at where you drafted them because that's in a keeper league you're rewarding players for the future for drafting. By well. the way, our league of record is a keeper league. Yeah. There is not a cost. No, we do in our league. What we're we do, freebies. we we give you three players, one you lock in as yours, guaranteed, and then you pick three more from your roster that don't match that franchise player's position, and we do a lottery, and two thirds of them come back to your team, and one goes into the draft, and we don't have a draft cost associated with it. Um, you just have part the of restrictions. That, yeah, I guess it, part of the fundamental reason why there's not a, a draft cost is because we try to encourage players to trade their picks all over the place. So if you are, you know, you could work that into the mix, right? Like you can still trade your picks, and then if you don't have your second and you're the, your keeper you draft in the second, you don't get that chance to keep them. But that's we just do three and no cost. All right, uh, Kyle in Indianapolis. We'll get to your question in just a second. We'll take a quick break and come back with more mailbag.
All right, Kyle's question. I have James Conner in a redraft league, but not Trey Benson. Should I trade Chuba Hubbard for Benson to get the Arizona backup or keep Hubbard since he looks like a great depth piece and a late round pick at the mm. moment? I would be very on the Hubbard side. I, I yeah, I think I'm keeping Chuba, the player that drafted Trey Benson. Uh, I mean, you're going to be crossing your fingers, of course, but if three to four weeks go by and James Conner is the James Conner that has been the Arizona Cardinals running back for the past couple of years, Trey Benson is probably going to hit the waiver wire. Like it, A pure insurance running back takes a lot of will and commitment to hold on to that player. Yeah, it, it's it's hard when you are – rostering those guys to to see a player on the waivers that that pops and not just drop them it's, yeah. it's really difficult I, I you know I've been the most I think anti Chuba not that I'm super against Chuba I think he's a good pick at value but I would rather roster him than Trey Benson one of these guys is the current starter every year you're shocked at how thankful you are to have any depth at running back to start on buys and injuries and all of a sudden if you have a starter or a high role player, you're so thrilled because that you just need him so often. And um, the problem with Connor is like, okay, if Connor went out for the season, Trey Benson is a yeah spend sure. it all. If 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 James Connor went out for a game, it's going to be a committee. It's not just going to be Trey Benson, the rookie, taking over every snap. There's going to be you know other players involved. So um, that complicates it. All right, Tom writes in on Instagram, where will DJ Moore finish? Well, um. What a great question. That is uh gonna need the time machine. I love DJ Moore. I think that he is uh he's not gonna be at number six again, like he was last year with Justin Field. But I don't think I think he can let, let's ask it this way. Do you guys think he can compete to get in the top twelve? And then where do you think he'll finish? I would be surprised if he does. I think he'll finish Closer to wide receiver 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there. You've got uh, more target competition, which he didn't have last year, and a rookie that you historically they won't throw as many touchdowns, and that will be the the one thing that hurts his fantasy production. Yeah, I'd I'd put him at the, you know, looking back at his career, he had a season of twelve and a half, then eleven point nine, eleven point two. I'd put him in that eleven points per game area. All right, I I have a question for our the deucers today um, because we are we just finished I think three drafts uh, recently the three of us or two or three of them um, first of all have you guys knocked out any drafts yet like are you done with like how many have you finished Al I've got two down two to go all right what about you uh, Papa two down two to go all right four down four down so Whoa, we got eight drafts over there all right um, I want to know because uh, you know you're regular people. How do you feel about your draft so far? Oh, I'm thrilled so far. So very, um, so thrilled, but yet monotone. Uh, Papa Josh, <laughs> Papa Josh, how do you feel? I feel really good. Uh, ask me after Thursday, though. Is that your big draft? That's the league of record. Oh, league of record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't have any picks. So Goodness. Not Are you optimistic. not showing up? Oh, I'm showing up. No, I'm talking I, to Andy. He's like, Thursday. what's Thursday? I, uh, I hired a celebrity to do a proxy for me oh. as, since I'm the champ. Oh, I'm getting a massage. Um, and then what about you, Falcon? I feel really good about two teams, but my Megalobowl team is not Oh, not no. Good. Not good? <laughs> <laughs> so you're increasing the odds of the Foot Clan to uh, make it into the Listener League. That's exactly. good. Um, all right. And what about what about the ones that we just finished? How are you guys feeling? Pretty good so far. Listener League, League of Shadows. Talk. Oh, I feel awful about my Listener League. We, we, or we told the story of yeah, that. Yeah, you were driving. Don't drive and draft was yeah, that don't, the advice don't 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 hospital and draft don't drive and draft now was that Al those are, or not those Al, are harder uh, ways to succeed falcon didn't you drive and draft your megalobowl team after he gave you that advice uh, yes i did and i also uh, hot tub and drafted too oh hot tub oh, and draft hot tub. Yeah, that's fine <laughs> a hot tub and draft honestly you're giving me a new idea for thursday <laughs> oh yes <laughs> please bring in a hot how tub. how cool would that be um <laughs> He just he's committed to staying in it the entire draft, and by the time it's oh, over, I'm just, it's just wrecked. Dead. Uh, IG question from Brooks Fangs. Talk about the path for Drake London to be a wide receiver one. Um, the path is very clear. Yeah, that's Kirk Cousins is very good. The offense surprises. They've got an easy path, a great 
like if you if you look at strength of schedule tools, obviously the defenses that they play they're going to change from last year. But as of now, and including um, you know just win totals and and expectations going forward, especially in the playoff stretch, like they remind me of what happened last year, how the schedule lined up for the Cowboys, where you could look and you could say like, man, the the they're playing good defenses against the run, bad defenses against the pass. So if Kirk Cousins is healthy and Drake London is his main target, he could easily, easily be a wide receiver one this year. You have been – you were very close on one of your bold predictions to being very bullish on Atlanta. Yes. Um, you have talked about that a lot. There is a little bit of me that looks at Atlanta like we did – um, when Matthew Stafford and the, the Rams, Rams, and we were all spending the offseason just – we weren't willing to hand the baton to them yet. But, like, let's just – if you just concede that Cousins is fine, mm -hmm. if you say that out loud and carry it to its ends, Drake London should be great. Kyle Pitts should be good. Bijan should be great. Mooney should be involved. Like, they're – if you just said he's fine, Who's a better, I don't think we've been willing to really say that. Yeah, who is a better wide receiver? Let me let me ask it this way. You're a general manager, okay. okay, and you are on the clock and you get to draft either Chris Olave or Drake London. Who would you take for your franchise? That is uh I am so upset that you said that out loud because <laughs> well, that is that is the those two have been the most difficult thought process for me. I and I lean I a lot. I'm, I'm going Drake. There I, you go. I think I lean Drake. And so it's it's one of those. He, you do they, get the benefit of no Derek Carr if you lean that way. But that's what I'm saying is the quarterback, if Kirk is healthy, he's clearly a better quarterback. So if you're saying that these guys are the same tier, the same if talent, or even that London is better. Yeah. If, if He might be a better quarterback. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. <sighs> you know, I do you remember when I was a defender? Of the car? Of Derek Carr? Yeah. Yeah. We all make mistakes. I just feel like watching that offense last year was so painful. There were times Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree, that combination together, all that he did for Darren Waller, awesome. Very fun. Last year, it was just awful to watch. It was the hardest to watch team. Bar if you take the Jets out that didn't have a quarterback, they were the hardest to watch team because the actual – offensive system was like they didn't have one that's what it felt like it was like what are you doing what what is this offense and he the vibes does. bad vibes I've been really trying to get my head around what Chris Olave is capable of doing in this offense because we all love the talent of Chris Olave but we have to acknowledge the tendencies of quarterbacks and offensive systems and in the schedule and the fact that you think Dennis Allen will be on the street soon and um like Carr has been able to throw the ball deep successfully in his career, but last year they were not on the same page for the first half. Could not get into the end zone. You know, so there are a lot of people out there that thinks Ola that think Olave will be one of the bigger busts in fantasy. That is a, a prevailing opinion. It it could it could easily happen. Um, thankfully, you know, Clint Kubiak is in town. Uh, you got Kubes bringing Koobs. his yeah. his system. So hopefully, the offense is just dramatically different looking than it was last year. Is this a real question, Kyle, from Instagram about why don't you work on Labor Day? I believe President Grover Cleveland had something to say about that when he signed that into law in 1894. Yeah. You know? They're, look, I, I and know. by the way, just for the record, a bunch of us did work on Labor Day. Yeah, yeah, we, we have been rushing to get – Everything for week one. Um, so a bunch of our team did work. There, on and I get it. Not everyone is afforded the holiday off, but there is something very ironic about here's your, let's celebrate the labor of America by working. Like what? <laughs> what? Yeah, um, we did have a really cool Labor Day release on YouTube that I should mention. Mm -hmm. Um we had uh, the biggest loser, Brian Ketron, and then Brooks put together a 2023 highlights video, which, uh, just spoiler alert, my favorite highlight is when I sniped you oh. in our mock draft and you literally raised your fist with fury and said, 
You're driving <laughs> me insane. Yeah. Yep, you were. So that's part of the highlight video, but you can check that out and, you know. That's a fun it's a fun watch. Don't worry. You we're going to have 5 days a week for the entire rest of the season and an extra episode as part of the Foot Clan. We're going to take off Christmas too, guys. Be, yeah. Get prepared. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get more Labor Days on the schedule. Talk to Grover. Okay. Not enough uh, kids got to give me a Ouija board. Not enough kids named Grover anymore. <laughs> no. Well, I wonder how many. There's got to be some. Oh, in my you know head, I mean? Grover in, Cleveland. In man. my head, I had flipped it. I was like, his name was Cleveland, but no, no, no his first name was Grover. Yeah, like when like, he he was. You isn't know. that the the Sesame Street character? That's yes. what I was wondering. I was racking my brain. Like, is <laughs> where's what's that name? Grover what? is yes, yeah, that is Sesame Street, and you know, I don't know, like he was Mr. President to. Oh, oh the, the little, professional, the little blue guy, the blue Elmo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The, no, he's the, not. An, he's much larger than Elmo. Is he? I don't know. Yes. These things, man, he's a, just a photograph. I think that once your name is used for like a Muppet or a very well-known puppet, you mean I, Josh looks like Grover. Just what? looks like a Grover. <laughs> oh, he looks like, <laughs> like a he could, Grover. He could pull it off if we if his name was Grover. Not a shower. Gotcha. Um, all right. Hey oh. All right. <laughs> Jason's jaw just dropped. <laughs> uh, YouTube question, Shane Falco or Johnny Utah? Now well, we're picking fake quarterbacks. These are fake quarterbacks. Make it quick. Shane uh, Falco. Come on. This is John, Johnny Utah's Johnny way Utah. cooler. I mean, if you need if you need an actual football player, you got to go Falco, but Johnny Utah. The replacements, right, with Shane Falco? Yeah, mm -hmm. and Johnny Utah is point break. Instagram question from Gabe Holden. Chase Brown or Brian Robinson for 2024? Ooh. Um, you can. Uh, I'm on Brian Robinson's. I'm team. on the Brian Robinson side as well. I, man, I'm gonna go Chase Brown. I, I I don't mind Brian Robinson. It's just it's very difficult for me to see the the path to actual real upside. He'll be a very competent fantasy player, but if Chase Brown can take over, then his upside is is yeah, wide. Yeah, I, I get picking the better offense, right? Yeah. You, you think the Bengals have a chance to be a really good offense? Which is gonna be the, difficult. Their depth chart just came out. And Zach Moss is the starter. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the thing. I'm I'm still on the Zach Moss side. So when I look at those two, both both players are in committees, <clears throat> and I believe that Brian Robinson is the back I want out of Washington, and I believe Zach Moss is the back that I want for the Bengals. Cole in Tucson has a pretty good question. Some names we haven't brought up a lot. Uh, when Greg Roman was the OC for the Ravens, all I hear all I heard about was how he schemed tight ends in the passing game more than wideouts. You have Will Disley and Hayden Hurst. Both sitting on waivers in most leagues. Hawaii. Yeah, it's it's a it is a fair question. I think Andy, I you, just took, you just brought up Hayden Hurst. I just drafted him with the second to last pick of my best ball draft. Uh looking at another tight end. Um but Disley was paid off season money to come in there as well. I it, it's also worth noting personnel. Right, like Mark Andrews might have been why he schemed tight ends so heavily right. because he had one of the best ones out there, and now it's Will Disley and Hayden Hurst. It, it, it's fair though; they don't have they don't have the wide receiver room with experience and ability that they, it actually kind of imitates what Baltimore dealt with for so many years. Was that's fair? Like they don't have them. Which one would you take between the two? Yeah. I would take Hayden Hurst. I would as um, well. Because I think Disley's just going to block the pants off of people. I mean, we'll say Wait like, a minute. I mean, what are we doing here? Yeah, I, how do you... We got a big Montana question? The show is going to want a big Montana to come through for the Chargers. Will Disley, big Montana. I don't think we need to change that jersey on there, by the way. That was close enough to yeah, Chargers color. Uh, I, so the I would, sound of football. <laughs> was doing a, you know, a quick look back. Because it was Mark Andrews, Vernon Davis. Like, of course, we're going to use these guys. And it was the couple years of Buffalo. I, I, I oh, couldn't. No. I couldn't put my finger on it. Is it? Guys, it was Mister Necessary. No. Charles Clay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that this. this yeah, this is a great point. Jeez. This should be brought up. I, you know, I Greg Dulcich. The reason why I think he's interesting is who are the established pass catch, pass catchers for the Broncos? Who are the established pass catchers for the Chargers? Lad McConkey, unestablished. It's, yeah, it's, so I don't know. One of those guys could come through. All right, um, we're going to wrap it up for today. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. And a reminder: there are two remaining times for Megalobowl drafts. 
uh, 5 p.m. Pacific tonight, if you're listening on Tuesday, and 9 a.m. Pacific Wednesday morning. The final two draft times, you can get in there still, megalobowl.com. That is going to do it for today. Just going to be one day away tomorrow, Jason. Yeah. Oh, two more sleeps. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.